Uh, Lady Windermere syndrome is the uh, term that was coined in the early 1990s for a pulmonary mycobacterium avium complex infection that occurs in middle-aged and elderly women. Um, it's really a misnomer, uh, one for literary purposes. It was based on a character in an Oscar Wilde play, and Lady Windermere was not the fastidious person that uh, was uh, in the minds of the authors who coined this term. Uh, she was actually a healthy, sort of early 20s uh, woman and had no cough. And um, the idea that these investigators had were that women were uh, being very dainty and uh, voluntarily suppressing their coughs. Um, I've seen many women with this disease, they are racked with cough, they really suffer from it. Um, and then we do bronchoscopies and they're loaded with secretions. And I had been thinking that for some reason there was something wrong with their cough physiology so that their cough was ineffective. Well, because of our interest in uh, cough in these women, um, we did a, a small pilot study. We recruited uh, eight women with pulmonary non-tuberculous mycobacterial disease, the overall moniker for uh, uh, these types of infections, and eight control women who were matched for age and body mass index, which is a measure of your uh, height relative to your weight. Uh, we did that because these women uh, were known to be generally tall and thin. Um, and we wanted to really understand the differences in cough specifically. Uh, what we found is that um, there were absolutely no differences in terms of uh, cough airflows, pressures, anything else with this reflex uh, cough that we stimulated except for their urge to cough. Um, I should mention the study involved um, inhaling a dilute um, solution of capsaicin, which is the stuff in peppers that is very irritating, but it's very dilute and this is a validated measure to, um, to understand cough. Um, so there's something wrong with the, the uh, perception of something in the airway in the women with, with NTM disease. We don't know if this is cause or effect, so future studies are really going to be needed to elucidate the mechanisms and to uh, study a much larger group of women to um, uh, to determine what the source is. Well, I think the, the implications are mainly that the cough is one of the major symptoms that brings these women to uh, the attention of a doctor, and it's one of their most distressing symptoms. So if we can better understand the mechanisms behind the cough, uh, we can then uh, find uh, interventions to uh, to resolve the cough much more quickly. Uh, at the current time when we treat with uh, our, um, the available medications, uh, it takes a while for the cough to resolve and, and maybe we can do that uh, in a more rapid manner. Well, the, the strength of the study is that we use this reflex cough that I mentioned, which is using this dilute capsaicin solution. So it wasn't dependent on voluntary or involuntary uh, cough generation or suppression. Um, uh, the main limitation is really um, our sample size. It was a very small study that uh, was intended to be a pilot study to see if we were on the right track. Uh, since it appears that we are on the right track, uh, we need larger studies. Well, at this point, um, I personally don't have a, a future study in the works. My colleague uh, and respiratory physiologist Paul Davenport at the University of Florida has been uh, working on methods to uh, better detect cough with an easy screening method. So uh, he and his co-workers have come up with a, uh, a simple test that might be used in the clinic to help us identify these patients. Um, he's also worked on methods to improve um, expiratory muscle strength. We don't know if that will translate into better cough effectiveness, uh, but the field's really wide open. We, we understand very little, uh, in, in spite of the fact that so much is um, known about cough and infections like influenza and TB, we really understand very little about how cough is generated on a mechanistic level.